biggest fight in the career of 36-year-old Devaro Williamson, who turned pro just four years ago. Not an easy road. His mother battled drug addiction. He lived in six foster homes as a child while his father was in jail. Six elementary schools, but he did not use that as a crutch. A 96 U.S. Olympic alternate, a three-time U.S. amateur champion, and in 98 received a master's degree in administrative services from Northern Michigan University. So no questioning the man's resolve. 2-0 since a dreadful first round knockout loss to Joe Macy off a majority decision over tough Cuban Southpaw Eliezer Castillo. But the major concern has to be his chin. How could it not be, Al, in light of the debacle with uh, Macy? Well, he admitted that for that fight, he probably was overcome by the moment. It was his biggest moment in boxing. This is his second chance, he said, to make a first impression. He hopes to overcome that tonight. A one-time stand-up comic who opened for Chris Tucker, former high school and college quarterback, also a mascot and cheerleader, who once tried out for the Indianapolis Colts. You get the feeling this is a guy who makes every minute count. As uh, you pointed out, very appreciative of this second opportunity. There he is, the barrel touch of sleep Williamson. There was a time when Vladimir Klitschko was considered the best of the Klitschko brothers, but ever since the Corey Sanders fight, a lot of question marks. His chin, his heart, his conditioning. Does he have what it takes? His first trip to the ring since the forgettable loss to Lehman Brewster. Klitschko, a heavy favorite, and as you can hear, the fan favorite. But given the recent rash of upsets, Al, is there cause for concern? I think there is for one simple reason. He's facing a man in Devar Williamson who has considerable power. And let's be honest about Vladimir Klitschko. He is two years removed from a really, really good performance. So he has to prove to the boxing world and the fans that he is capable of fighting like he did a couple of years ago when, as you pointed out, he looked like the heir apparent to the throne in the heavyweight division. As he makes his way through the ropes, Vladimir Klitschko admitting he's at the bottom of the division. Still, his trainer, Hall of Famer, Emmanuel Stewart, insists Vladimir can be as good as the best heavyweight he ever trained Lennox Lewis. And he showed evidence of that a couple of years ago. This is a superb athlete who, if he can harness that and fight well over the course of entire fights, he can do it. And you got a glimpse in the background of his older brother Vitali in there to lend support. Let's size him up right now as we check out the tail of the tape. And we wonder, will age be a factor at 36 Williamson, eight years older than Klitschko? Three and a half inch height advantage for the nearly 6'7 Klitschko and a three inch edge in reach as well for Vladimir. At yesterday's weigh-in, Klitschko, one pound shy of his career heaviest, has 26 pounds on Williamson. And the key unified rules for this non-title fight, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt occurs before the end of the fourth round, the fight is ruled a no decision. If it happens after the end of round four, they go to the scorecards. So here at Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, getting ready for our main event, Vladimir Klitschko versus Devaro Williamson. Let's get the official introductions from our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the new Roman Plaza Amphitheater here at the home of champions, Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, as we present the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by Gary Shaw Productions in association with K2 Promotions, Warriors Boxing Promotions, Caesars Palace, and Showtime. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is John Bailey. Commissioners 
Dr. Tony Alamo, Skip Avancino, Joe W. Brown, and Dr. Flip Homansky with the executive director, Mark Ratner. Our physicians at ringside, Dr. Margaret Goodman, Dr. William Berliner, Dr. Al Cabana, and Dr. Jeff Davidson. Timekeepers at the bell, also keeping count of the knockdowns, we have Jane Broadfoot and James Cavan. Introducing to you our three judges, scoring this bout from ringside. From Las Vegas, Nevada, Chuck Jumpa. Also from Las Vegas, we have Jerry Roth. And from Carson City, Nevada, Doug Tucker. And our third man in the ring, the referee in charge of this bout, we have Jay Nady. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening. 10 rounds of boxing and a heavyweight special attraction. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's showtime. Introducing to you first on my left, he is fighting out of the blue corner, wearing navy blue trunks with silver trim, fighting out of Denver, Colorado, by way of our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. He weighed in at 218 pounds. His record stands at 20 wins, two losses, with 17 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the former NABF heavyweight champion, currently ranked number Number 10 in the world by the WBC, introducing uh, Devero, Touch of Sleep, Williamson. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the red corner in this 10 round heavyweight special attraction, wearing red trunks with gold trim, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of Kiev, Ukraine. He weighed in at 244 pounds. His record stands at 42 wins, three losses, with 39 big wins coming by way of knockout. Number six in the world by the WBO. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former WBO heavyweight champion of the world, introducing Vladimir Klitschko. Once again, a referee in charge, Jay and Nady, now to give instructions 12 rounds of boxing schedule. One second, let's go. Fighter, come, sec come center. Do you have any questions? Obey my commands. Both your uh, trunks look just fine. Touch gloves now. Good luck. Let's go to work. A fight that features two powerful sluggers with vulnerable chins, which usually makes for interesting fights. Klitschko has a doctorate in sports science. Williamson has mentioned a master, so both should be smart enough to know that this is all about both highly motivated even desperate and let me tell you Vladimir Klitschko kept staring at Devaro Williamson from the moment he got oh, in the fight. ring trying to doing his best Sonny Liston impression and Williamson never looked at him even during the instructions I think he feels he can intimidate Williamson early we'll see we should point out we uh uh, picked up that Klitschko had a nosebleed in the dressing room. They were working on it all the way up to the ring walk. And we'll see if that uh, impacts here. Klitschko, once the future of the division, looks to dig out from the rubble of two losses in his last four fights, most notably the embarrassing defeat to Lehman Brewster. Williamson realizes if he is to be taken seriously, it has to begin here. Now, DeVar Williamson isn't by nature a boxer, but he will... He's a boxer puncher, but he will move in these first couple of rounds. He hopes it will go four and two rounds to try and get through these early rounds where he thinks, and everyone, of course, these days thinks Klitschko will not do well in the middle rounds. And make no mistake, Williamson has some power. He can punch. Klitschko normally prefers to fight at a slow, relaxed, deliberate pace. Will Williamson set a fast pace and look to test Klitschko's athletic skills. Will Klitschko pick up his pace and intensify his attack? Emmanuel Stewart told us they expect Williamson to bring a lot of movement, so they have changed Klitschko's style to be more aggressive. And that's what Williamson is doing here in round one. He is boxing, he is moving. He, he doesn't want to get hit by Klitschko um, early on. 
Williamson says he'll outthink Dr. Klitschko. Said he's not going to go right after him. Good left hook by Williamson. He's counter punching fairly well early in this bout. And he's capable of it, though it's not his major stock in trade. You know, Williamson was one of the most decorated amateur boxers ever for the United States. A three-time champion, but never made it to the Olympics. Would have fought Vladimir in the 1996 Olympics had he won in the trials, but lost. Vladimir Klitschko uh, winning the gold medal in those Olympics at super heavyweight. Williamson uh, looking to be tactical, looking to trick uh, Klitschko as best he can. A fight in which Williamson is faced with an interesting dilemma. Which Klitschko will he see? He prepared for a couple of different Vladimirs, saying he's ready for the best Vladimir Klitschko that he's seen in the past. In the old days, before they had the 24-second uh, clock in the pros and uh, also the shot clock in, uh, in basketball and college basketball, you could buy time early in the match with the four-corner offense, etc. Think of this as Williamson's four-corner offense. He just wants to get this fight in the fourth or fifth round. He's becoming Dean Smith in the early in this fight. I was fight. just going to say, Dean Smith. Little trickle of blood from the left eye of Vladimir Klitschko. I'm not sure if that's as a result of heads coming together. I didn't see it or a punch. Fighting a good fight. No way, it's a little small scratch. The most important thing, keep the pressure on him and keep fending him alive. He rounds at this pace. Only Muhammad Aki go this pace. So he's going to slow down. And then start shooting with the right hand instead of body sometimes, okay? And other than that, you're fighting a good fight. The only danger when you got a guy is running, running, running. Then when he stops and punches, sometimes you're not expecting a punch, and that's why you can get caught. But keep putting the pressure on. Do a lot of fading. Make him keep running. He cannot run much more than one more round, okay? So you're fighting a good, patient fight. And sometimes shoot the right hand to the body. Just a little bit, a little right hand to the body. And eventually, after all exchanges, shoot the jab after you finish up, okay? It's a good fight. You gotta love Emmanuel Stewart. <laughs> He's not Muhammad Ali. He can't keep up this pace. Referring to Devaro Williamson. Let's see if he does. Uh, Listen to Emmanuel Stewart and shoot that short compact right like he said he'd like like him to. Now there's the hook from Klitschko. Let him go. He thought of as a right-handed puncher, but I think if there's a punch that will land most effectively against uh, Williamson, and Joe Macy showed that, it's the left hook. And uh, Klitschko has a pretty good one, uh, even though the right hand is his most notable knockout weapon. They've been working on cutting off the ring, uh, Emmanuel Stewart and Klitschko, knowing that Williamson might give them this movement. And there you see Klitschko doing just that. There's the jab by Williamson, who continues to move around and up on his toes. Does a little dance. So you might say, that, you know, boy, Williamson's going to give away a lot of rounds here if he keeps doing this. He doesn't care. He doesn't care if he gives away four rounds. He's he's hoping that he can get Klitschko into middle rounds, and it'll be a replay of the Brewster fight and um, uh, and also the Ross Purity fight from years ago when Klitschko was ahead and got knocked out later. Williamson, a 6'3", 36-year-old, four-year pro. He's done a pretty good job. Oh, here comes Klitschko. Done a pretty good job of dispelling the myth. He's too old and too small for the division. Stop, stop. Stop. Williamson just yeah, bodily takes go. Klitschko let to the ropes. Go. Well, you know. Let him go, I say let him go. He's going to have to hold on and grab him all, and that's what he did when he got hit with that right hand. That's what Emmanuel Stewart wanted to see. To see if Klitschko unleashes the right again. Looks like he's trying to set it up with the jab. Very effective jab right there. It got through the defense. He, his jab when he throws it well is like George Foreman's. It's a weapon as a heavyweight, and his is that. It's not just a probing jab. It's a weapon indeed. There 
There it is again. It snaps Williamson's head back. Under 30 seconds left in round two. Very effective jab here being displayed by Klitschko. You know, Williamson, if he used his jab a little bit, would nullify that. And there, see, there's the Williamson jab. You know, he's not committing himself that much by throwing the jab. He doesn't want to commit himself, Williamson, by throwing power punches, but the jab, he could get away with. Now, Klitschko attempts the right, but it came up short. That went into the gloves of Williamson. Stop, stop. And they tangle again at the bell. Nice round. Listen to me. You ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing. You hear me? Yeah. You're back standing straight up, man. You want to compete at this level, man. You got to do the right thing. You hear me, see? Yeah. Snap out of it. You hear me? Get low, man. This guy's breathing out of his mouth already. Get low and coil up and do what you're supposed to do. You hear me? Yep. No more stupid mistakes. You're standing straight up and he's coming at you. Smooth side to side. You understand? Yep. Let's get it together. Vladimir Klitschko in that last round using the jab to set up the straight right hand and that one gets there and Williamson has to fight back to make sure he doesn't get nailed with another punch. From Williamson's viewpoint, the jab and the straight right, very, very effective. George Durbin, interestingly, in the corner of Williamson, they didn't want him standing straight up. They wanted him moving, but getting low, uh, where, where Klitschko wouldn't hit him with the jab and the straight right hand so much. It is round three, scheduled for Ted. Non-title heavyweight affair. See, different posture by, by William, Williamson. They don't want him standing so upright. Klitschko doesn't have an uppercut to speak of. But he keeps pumping that jab. Let's go, so, uh, rather, Williamson saw an opening, but couldn't connect with the right. Let's go, his mouth wide open, if that means anything. Nobody throwing anything now. Finally, a big right hand that landed by Vladimir Klitschko. And if, if um, Williamson doesn't exactly look like Larry Holmes and Muhammad Ali and uh, Jimmy Ellis, and you can name the, the good boxers, it's because he isn't. This is not something he does, but he's doing it for this fight. And that's why his movement looks labored, but it's keeping him in the fight in, in this third round. Now, is is Klitsch going to going to fade as we get into middle rounds? I don't know, especially if there's no pressure put on it. But it's the one chance Williamson thinks he can give himself, and that's why you're looking at a guy that doesn't look like he's very good at this style. It's just, he's being just barely good enough to hang in there. Let's go with a right hand right off the top of Williamson's head. Yeah, Devaro looking very mechanical. He's back to being uh, upright. And Klitschko just patiently waiting for the opening. Fans impatient. They want to see more action. They want this to be a heavyweight shootout. So with Klitschko in a way, although he's want to take punches. And make no mistake, Williamson does have some pop. Yeah, that's why Vladimir Klitschko isn't rushing in, because Williamson can punch. 56 of the 62 uh, fights these fighters have been involved in have ended in knockout. So while we're seeing a very slow pace over three rounds, don't expect uh, this to go the full distance. I doubt that it will. Williamson 20 and 2 with 17 knockouts. Let's go 42 and 3 with 39 KOs. But Williamson's chin very much in question. Now, he has taken a couple of good right hands, and there was a hook from Klitschko. Stop! Stop! But not so, Klitschko's not been able to follow up on those punches. Time! Thank you. A man who has provided uh, all kinds of excitement at this venue, Thomas Hearns, who established himself as one of the greats in boxing history in the 80s, headlined many big fights here at Caesars.
bouts with uh, Hagler, Leonard, Duran became classics. Part of a, a generation of middleweights, junior middleweights, uh, and welterweights that we may not see again for a long, long time. Earlier tonight, the hitman's son, Ronald, the victorious, to make it 4 and 0. Oh. We're playing a very intelligent fight. Good fight. The most important punch is the left jab. And then you start adding more and more and more to it. More right hands to the body okay, here. Guys, okay. Let's go. Okay. All right, let's go. Let's go. Well, you heard Emmanuel Stewart, he's happy. And he's correct. The jab is the most important punch for him because once he keeps, if he keeps throwing it, which Williamson is long and to do it, will set up the right hands and uh, those rights to the body and ultimately also maybe a left hook that will land. You know, it's a misnomer for people to think Klitschko hasn't fought good heavyweights. He dominated Chris Bird, who, of course, has one of the championships and beat him. He beat Jamil McCline. He beat Derek Jefferson. He beat Botha when he could still fight a little bit. He beat Monty Barrett. He's beaten the people he's supposed to beat. Oh, my. He's down. Wow. A straight right hand for Klitschko down. Six. Seven. You okay? Eight. Come he got up fast. Right. It's a flash right. knockdown. He's just right. stunned out of nowhere. And now a con confident Williamson goes back to it. But stop, Devon stop, Williamson stop, better stop, be careful. Stop, if he stop. rushes in, he can stop. get nailed with something big. Yeah, he can't be too cocky here. Uh-oh. Don't be throwing those wild left hooks, Devon. Now, all of a sudden, a fight breaks out. Yeah. Well, maybe he only needed to get to round three, not round five, as I suggested. Oh, it's... Wild now as stop, they continue stop. to brawl with a minute 40 and counting in round Box. four. Stunningly, Vladimir Klitschko stop, stop. No, 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 went no, no. down. And a lot of time left in this round, although he didn't seem really hurt, just stunned. No. You can't grab him like that, all right? But, but certainly a less confident Vladimir Klitschko Stop. and a more confident Williamson who's coming short. in and Box. getting some shots off. No, Cutter on no, the left no, no, eye no. of Klitschko, you some blood. Hold him Mentioned it uh, a little bit earlier. Box. Klitschko down for uh, the third time in his career here in round four. And then a right hand by Klitschko. And now Williamson just trying to hold on. Dangerous time for Williamson. Here comes Klitschko on the attack. Stop! Stop! That knockdown may have emboldened Devon Williamson way too much. He still has to be very careful. 40 seconds no, no, left no, in the no, fourth. No, no, no. Turn no. no spinning. Let's go trying for the knockout here. Stop! Stop! Blood around his left eye. So all of a sudden, things have become a little dramatic here. At the very least, Devon Williamson is in this fight. Now, it's interesting. He had that knockdown and won the first part of the round, but has been beaten in the second part of the round to a great extent. And he nailed Klitschko with another right hand. Back comes Klitschko with a right and a left counter by Williamson at the bell. Take it easy. Don't get excited. You're getting too excited. You understand? Yeah. Just get back to your basic posture. You, you didn't get hit with a normal right hand. You was throwing a punch. You got caught off balance. So just take it easy and don't panic. Just work your jab now, okay? Get back to working your jab and take your time, okay? Fight a very patient. Take it. Here's how Devaro Williamson was able to create a knockdown. Uh, Klitschko was made himself lower than he normally does, not fighting as straight up. You see, he leaned in. And that is a way, by the way, that he got nailed by Lehman Brewster in their fight. He will oftentimes make himself smaller instead of fighting tall. It's one of the great, great attributes of Lennox Lewis. He never fought small. And that's what, Luke, what uh, Stewart really wants uh, Klitschko to do. But that time he did. Jacob Stitch Duran going to work in the Klitschko corner on that left eye. Yeah, Klitschko keeping his left hand extremely low most of the time. And as you point out, that's what cost him. 
in the fight with Brewster. You're going to laugh at me for saying this. Williamson has created, put a seed of doubt in Klitschko's mind. I say for the next two rounds, if I'm Devar Williamson, I fight those exactly as I fought the first two and a half and see if I can get him into the sixth or seventh and then go after him. No reason for Devar Williamson to go after Klitschko right now, other than to entertain us, which would be fun. <laughs> and this crowd. He waited for Klitschko to make a mistake. He made one and he got him down. Maybe a mistake like that in a couple of rounds could create a better knockdown for Williamson. We don't know. As you saw as the crowd begins to boo now, as not much uh, happens, you saw the press row scoring. Two guys had uh, Klitschko ahead, one even. I have Klitschko 39-37 ahead in this fight. I made the round a 10-9 round because Klitschko came back and dominated so much. And some may have put that at 10-8 for Williamson yeah. with the knockdown. As well they could have. Things have slowed considerably here in round five after an action, uh, all action round four. And what is Klitschko not doing? That. He's not throwing yeah. the jab. And, and Stewart really wants that punch. And it's the punch that would control this fight completely for him. But you know what, Al? It's early, but I'm just not seeing a guy as Klitschko gets caught there. I'm just not seeing a guy who, who should represent the future of the heavyweight division, at least not yet. It is not a, as complete a, a performance as they would like, certainly. And that's been his problem in the recent fight. Just sort of fights in, in bursts and stretches. He's not the same person he was a couple of years ago when he looked for all the world like he's putting everything together. Yeah, ever since that Sanders fight, it's not been the same. Again, you know, the jab being used more by Klitschko and Aaron Nix is in the hook. He can control this fight with that jab. Of course, all of a sudden, he stops doing it. Yeah, and sometimes he'll try an odd thing like an overhand right as a lead, and that's when he got clipped with the right hand by Williamson. Still has that left hand really low, does Klitschko. Now he brings it up. Klitschko's also trying to lean in a little bit more, again, making himself a lower target. That's what happens later in fights. Oh, the blood now coming down. The face of Klitschko. And Margaret Goodman stepping in, the doctor. They may have clashed heads toward the end of that yes, round. I think they did. That's what happened. That's a big one. Yeah, you can't oh, handle that. Man. Oh, you can handle it. Come on. No, no, no. It's... No, that's. Yeah, let's go. What up? I'm ready. There we go. It's a dry there town. we go. We got it. Give me a dry town. There we go. Some awkward action in the last round there. And I'm gonna stop the flash the of heads no, that created this fight. We're going, to the, we're going to the scorecards. Okay, just and right there. We, you heard Jane 80 say we're going to the scorecards based upon that clash of heads. It's over, Al. It's over. Yeah, after the end of four, they go to the scorecards. You hear the uh, crowd reaction. The doctor makes the determination. It is a nasty cut, very deep, and the blood is going into the eye. the blood had the uh, potential of entering the eye. You see just going down the bridge of the nose there. Also, they didn't think they could stop it. Yep. So Dr. Margaret Goodman there makes uh, the recommendation. Jane 80 abides. And uh, this fight is over here after, what was that, five rounds? Mm -hmm. So they have to go to the scorecards after four. So five rounds uh, were complete. And uh, they will go to the cards, and this one is history. It ends uh, unceremoniously, unfortunately, with a cut on a clash. No, no question that was a clash of heads, absolutely none. And the sad thing for Vitaly, or for, excuse me, for Vladimir Klitschko is that he 
didn't have the chance to really answer all the questions people had about him. A fight in which he's knocked down once, may well get the decision. We would expect he might, might, but nevertheless, uh, a fight in which he didn't get a chance to put his stamp on this against a man who had been knocked out in one round by Joe Macy, who later was really manhandled by Giroff, even in a fight yep. Macy won. So a, a very incomplete night. Yeah, very much in this fight, and uh, not one that the Klitschko's are going to be happy with no matter what. No, it was sort of an awkward, inconsistent uh, approach by v Vladimir Klitschko. Jim Gray is with the uh, ringside physician, Dr. Margaret Goodman. Jim? All right. Steve, thank you. Dr. Margaret Goodman is here. She's reluctant to talk on camera, but she did just tell me that uh, she stopped the fight because it was down to the bone on the forehead of Klitschko, and she recommended to Jane Nady that the fight be stopped. So she stopped the fight. Is that basically what you were just telling me, Dr. Goodman? Yes. And the cut went below the level of the brow down to where one of the nerves goes to control part of the pupil. So we wanted to stop. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. That's the story, Steve. We'll now wait for the decision from Jimmy Lennon. Kind of a, a reminiscent of the first Corrales Casamayor yes, fight thinking. and her explanation, Dr. Goodman's explanation, very good and succinct as it was then. This is where the clash of heads came, right at the end of the round, toward the end of the round. Uh, yeah, uh, very obvious. Not, neither man really made it happen. Klitschko came in, Williamson came with the right hand. It was not intentional. But nevertheless, it occurred. And the heads blasted together, and it created just a terrible, terrible cut. It's one of those bad breaks in boxing. And it's this case, especially bad break, because it left us with an inconclusive feeling about this fight and about Vladimir Klitschko in general. And certainly, Devaro Williamson would say it took away, uh, could have taken away, we don't know yet, could have taken away Devaro Williamson's chance for a victory. We'll see, though. We don't know yet because we haven't gotten to the scorecards. Well, that blood just started gushing down after that last uh, clash. And remember, you know, that could have easily been a two-point round, the knockdown round for Devaro Williamson. Easily could have been. All right, so we'll see uh, how it all comes out as we send it up to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout has been stopped at the end of round number five. Vladimir Klitschko is a recipient of an unintentional headbutt. Our referee in charge, Jay Nady, stops the contest upon advice of the ringside physician. According to unified rules, we then go to the scorecard since the fight went more than four rounds. And after five rounds of action, we have a split decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Chuck Jompa scores the bout 49 to 46 in favor of Vladimir Klitschko. Judge at ringside, Doug Tucker sees the bout 48 to 47 in favor of Devero Williamson. Judge at ringside, Jerry Roth scores the bout 49 to 46 in favor of the split technical decision winner, Vladimir Klitschko. Well, some mixed uh, reaction from the crowd here, as, uh, well, nobody's ever happy when a fight ends in this fashion. But then a split technical decision goes the way of Vladimir Klitschko, and, uh, you know, what, he, what can you say? There's really not a much uh, to celebrate right now. And I know you want to get some comments in, Al, uh, but uh, we'll get to that uh, momentarily. Let's go to Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Steve. Vladimir, first of all, how is your forehead? Um, so, I want to say thanks for Devere Williamson. He's in great shape. He's a tough fighter. And I built my fight with the left jab. And uh, it was not easy to fight with him. How's your also, forehead? How's your forehead? <laughs> and on the end of the round, I really feel that I taken care of his left and his right hand. And uh, yeah, it was head, but, but I would like to continue to fight. And uh, I understand that some some people and boxing fans, they want to see uh, um, with the full distance how it's going to be. 
And so, you know the results and how it, how it looks like. Did you feel as though you were winning this fight? I feel pretty confident and I feel that I'm winning the fight in the second round. Uh, the barrel hit me with the right hand was pretty good. But anyway, I was clear and I was ready to fight. So, but I feel confident and I feel that they're winning every round. Tell me what happened here in the fourth round when you were knocked down. I was out of balance and of course, of course he cut me with the right hand, but it was more out of balance. So, but anyway, it was clear, clear right hand and I have to admit it. Vladimir, how was your conditioning tonight? Had this fight continued to go, would you have been able to do better than you did against Brewster and was your conditioning better for this fight? I mean, as you see, it was five rounds and uh, <laughs> it's again of the fifth round. The fight was coming to the end with another results event, uh, um, uh, like it was in the last fight in April. But I feel pretty good and my condition is good and I think that the fight was pretty fast also. If this was a fight to regain your confidence, did you accomplish that? I think I never lost my confidence, even I lost two fights in a row, almost in a row, against Corey Sanders and against, the, the, and against Brewster, and uh, I, I didn't lose my confidence, I'm pretty confident. Let me bring in Manny Stewart for his assessment, because you've got a keen eye for this. Manny, what's your assessment? Before I we... thought it was a good performance. It's very difficult to fight anyone who's steadily running away. Every time he makes a motion to get into the fight zone, Devera was very smart. He was running out of the fight zone. So it's very difficult to do anything when everything you do, you know the guy's going to be running back, which was very smart. He was trying to wait a match. So it was really very difficult to really evaluate a person off of this. But I was satisfied with the stamina. But aren't you concerned with what you've seen here in the ring tonight? You said before the fight that you think that this guy is better than Lennox Lewis if he could put it together. And he certainly isn't showing anything like that, Manny. Well, I would say to go to the knockdown, the knockdown was mainly off balance knockdown. I don't care if I was in the other corner, I would have to say that. The knockdown Take a look was, at it, he, Manny. Vladimir threw a right hand and got off balance and Dervero came back with a great right hand. But it was this great, perfect perm right hand and he was in a bad position. So it was a perfect right hand from Devereaux's report, and he was just out of balance at the time. Has Klitschko been the same fighter since Corey Sanders? Well, Two years now. Sorry, Sanders. Well, it's very difficult to say. You just remember, for the most part of the career, the Klitschko brothers fought primarily in Germany in controlled type situations. Now they're over here with the big boys, like Linux. They are actually fighting and training over here in America. And as we have discussed, it's going to be more difficult. I mean, it's not where everything was controlled as it was in Germany. So they're going to have to battle their way back up to the top the rough way here. Where does he go from here now? Well, I would like to see him. I really would like to see uh, uh, him fight again as soon as possible, possible in December. And uh, we would like to fight anyone, even if it's Devereaux again. It does not matter. But I think he must fight, win or lose. He's got to be busy fighting. Will you be healed by December? Uh, yeah. Let's see. I didn't see my face yet, so I had to check it out and also talk to the doctor. So let's see what's come up. The, but I have to admit, I would like to come back in the ring as soon as possible. Against Devereaux again? Be, I don't know. Feel better. Let's bring in Devero. You acquitted yourself here very well tonight. You were able to knock Klitschko down here in that fourth round. Did you feel as though you were ahead when you went to the scorecards? Uh, I felt that I was ahead, but I felt it was close. Uh, I really uh, agreed with like something like 48, 46 uh, because of knockdown. Uh, like uh, I guess as as usual, uh, we tried to uh, not necessarily wait it out, but we tried to let him kind of shoot his blow early in the fight. So my fight is from the conditioning; it's from round five on to to ten, and that's what we we had planned all along. Based on what you'd seen against Brewster. Precisely. Uh, so therefore, you know everything was going uh, scheduled to plan. Uh, my coach wanted me to throw a little bit more punches during that. During, during the first five rounds, though. However, but we did you know, get a, a good shot. He was a little bit off balance, but it was a punch that, that knocked him down. So we felt that we should have uh, maybe won that round at least 10, 10, 8, 10, 7, possibly 10, 7. Tell us your version of what happened at the end of the fifth round here with the headbutt as we take a look at it. I think uh, it was 10 seconds left or something like that. We heard it hit, uh, the guy hit the mat, and so we're trying to uh, uh, slide in with the uh, the one two. Uh, Jay Nady kept warning uh, Vladimir a number of times in I think round two, round three about holding, and I was surprised he didn't take a point. He warned him maybe like three or four times, you know, you know, right uh, in, in a row. So I think our heads maybe hit. Uh, you know, it was so you know, it was. Um, Excitement in there, so I, I'm not sure. I know that maybe you know it was a punch or w whatever, but uh, looks like it was just, you know, it was a headbutt or whatever, or a slightly clash of heads, you know, incidental. And um, we, uh, you know, 
this is this is really unfinished business. I don't think that Vladimir could could raise his hands. I don't think that uh, I could necessarily raise our hands and feel confident that this was a win or a loss. I, I, I think we should we should do it again. And um, you know, if, if he would, I mean, I would love to do it again. And once he uh, he heals up. Thank you very much for your time. Maybe there will be a rematch. Thank you, Jim. All right, Jay Nady, we asked him to come on camera. He declined to speak on camera. He did tell me that the cut was deep, and he took the recommendation of Dr. Margaret Goodman. He said the cut was very deep down to the bone, just above the pupil, and he just didn't foresee Klitschko being able to continue under these conditions. Steve?